I'm going to tongue twist <clears throat> myself with <clears throat> Shimano Stiffness Index. Okay. Sean Connery plays tennis at tennis. There's definitely who had that in top. Sean Connery. Uh, Sean Connery. Right, okay, let's go. Right. Hello and welcome to Road TC and welcome to Shiny Stuff where we take a look at stuff that has come into the office and the magpies that we are, we've kind of thought, oh, that doesn't looks, necessarily that looks have to be shiny. No, but it can most be things matte are. carbon yeah. as well. Uh, this is shiny. This is a mm. new thing that's come in. This is the Thorn Club Tour Mark V. It's incredibly large. I don't think I'll be getting on there, will I? You probably live in one of those tyres. Yes. Being the tiny person that you are. Um, so this is a, a new version of what is a classic touring bike. So this is the fifth incarnation, obviously. Uh, all made from Renault 725 Chromoly. Chromoly. Look, it says it there. Can you see oh, it? Oh, it does, yes. Yeah. It says Chromoly. Yes, yeah. well done. I've learned. Uh, Chromoly steel. Um, what's been updated for this version? Mostly what's been updated here is that tyres are getting bigger. We've seen that as a big trend. Mm -hmm. So this bike now, Thorne says that it can take up to a 40mm 700C tyre or up to a 54mm 650B tyre. So this is running 650 wheels and these tyres are actually a 57 and it's got mud guards and there's spacers so you could probably go <laughs> oh yeah, quite, big, quite a lot bigger than that, probably up to a 60. So you know this is great you can put 700s on it and run it as a normal touring bike or you can go a bit more gravelly, a bit more off-roady and do it in a more sort of bike packing bikepacking off-road touring build like this. Um, it's running a Mark III fork, which has got a 110 boost axle. So it's boost at the front, 110 mil, and then it's a standard 135 mil QR at the back. So you have to get a specific set of wheels built up for it. Um, and we've got Shimano 105, we've got a triple chain set, like old school. We've got cable disc brakes here, and bits and bobs. But it's a very versatile frame. You can also run the frame as a V-brake frame. So there's some bosses here for okay. 700 and for 650, uh, but you can't do that with the fork. As you know, I know nothing about touring. So I'm presuming that some of these bolts here, you can, means you can add racks and things? Yes, you can add a rack here. Absolutely, okay. we've got the mud guard on already. There's another bottle boss under here that you can use either for a third bottle or you can use it for um, a toolkit or a fuel bottle if you're using um, a stove on your adventures. You can bolt a stove to it. We can't. No, you can bolt a few bolts. All oh, right. <laughs> oh. Yeah. You bolt a stove to it and you fill the frame with fuel. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> Bacon on the go. <laughs> and also, you can put a rack on the front. So there's low rider mounts here for a front rack. Yeah. Excellent. I really don't know anything about it. I have the only no thing idea. Liam had to say about this bike was, oh, it's got quite a quite a big kind of engagement angle here as if he's going to be like sprinting out of a corner down the crit circuit. So that was his only useful contribution. Yes. Thank you, Liam. Uh, so that is the Thorn Club Tour Mark V. We'll be reviewing it in this build. Uh, you can buy it uh, as a built bike, you can buy it as a frame only. So there we go. Next up is this. Uh, it's a saddle, obviously, from one of our favourite saddle designers, Repente. Yeah, made in Italy yeah. uh, and looks to be wide. Funnily enough, it's not actually wider than, say, a standard saddle. So that's 142 millimetres wide, which is pretty much a standard width for that's saddles. That's the wide width if you get two widths normally, isn't it? It is, yes. two. Yeah, OK. Uh, full carbon design, yep. T700 uh, unidirectional carbon, made using a autoclave processing process which is where they take a lot of pressure and when squeeze you do things. Bit. Yes, I, I researched this earlier. <laughs> take a lot of pressure, squeeze it together, and apparently it creates a more uniform uh, carbon and that allows the carbon to work better. Looks very nice. We've had a lot of, well, not a lot, a few Repente saddles mm. in, most of their range, actually, yeah. uh, to review. We've liked them. They do another one which has a removable cover so you can change the, the padding and the design of it, which is pretty good. And um, it's still pretty light. 144 grams, 219 euros. Okay. So we'll be getting that on a bike soon. Looks yeah. Good. Apparently, apparently they say this is good for road riders and off-road riders. So if you ride mountain bikes, gravel, that, you'll be the same. 
um, and women too, as well as men. So, so literally the only saddle you need, you can yes. swap it between all your bikes. Although as all saddles go, if it fits you, it probably will work. Yeah. If it doesn't, then it won't. Okay. Next up is these shiny shoes. Mm, Shimano RC5s. Yeah, uh, these are kind of the mid to lower range shoe from Shimano. So I've seen you larking about in a very white pair of yep. Shimano S5 shoes. And they're still white. Thank you. And they are much. RC9s, is that They right? are, yes. So this is, R and then there's an RC7, which yep. I've got a pair of, which are very good. And then there's these, which are an RC5. So if you're looking at these and thinking, oh, they look quite a lot like the top of the range, well, they do borrow a lot of trickle-down technology. Uh, that is a synthetic upper, uh, BOA L6 dial. So you do get the micro-adjustment on the tightening bit, but it's a full release for opening. Okay. And you get a Velcro strap at the bottom there. Cool, and not a full carbon sole, obviously, at this price. Carbon reinforced nylon. Okay. So stiff enough, eight out of 12 on the Shimano Stiffness Index. On the Shimano Arbitrary Stiffness yes. Index. Yeah. Who Brilliant. knows what that means. Uh, vented at the bottom there for a bit of extra yeah. airflow. And $129.99. Oh. And they come in blue, white, and black. So. Yeah, they're good. They look like they could be really, really good value. Yeah. Especially for kind of enthusiasts, weekend racers, just generally good shoe. Yeah. Hopefully. Brilliant. I've got some Mari no, I haven't got Marigolds. I've got some Velotoes gloves. So you'll know Velotoes, the kind of balloons that you can put over your shoes for really wet weather. Is that their I mean, marketing spiel you're reading out there? Yes, I'm sure it is. <laughs> they work amazingly. You might get slightly sweaty feet and they can be Tad difficult to get on if you don't watch the instructional video, but they're fabulous. And now they got. I gloves. enjoy your understatement, Liam. Good. So, if you list your activities and hobbies as cycling and also washing up and murdering, <laughs> these are the gloves for you. Looks like. <laughs> oh, <laughs> these. Uh, the, I don't know where to go from there. These are <laughs> waterproof and windproof. Um, Velotoes rate them to minus five if it's cold and dry, or plus to kind of plus 15 if it's, dropping that, if it's warm-ish and also raining. Okay. So I'm not sure where the balance point will be, but it looks like they'll pr be pretty good for the early season races, mm. which I have been suffering in this month. So I really like a neoprene glove. Mm. Uh, I find them to be good, like really warm. They, they stink, obviously, yeah. but you know, and that's by the by. But what they're not is windproof, generally speaking. Yes. So these ones are windproof. Yes, They've got a, a kind of rubber, a rubber coating on. Yeah. Which also, presumably, makes them fully waterproof, whereas neoprene's not normally. Yes, the neoprene gloves usually just collect the water mm. and make you warm and quite wrinkly. But these, that surface feels actually quite grippy. So the palm might be a bit more grippy on shifter hoods, mm -hmm. on brakes as well. There's only one way to find out, and that's to send you out yeah. into the wilds, into the next storm, whatever that might be. What are we Probably, up to? Okay. I don't know. It, it's in. I'm racing in Wales on the weekend, so it will definitely rain. It will definitely rain. Brilliant. Hundred percent guarantee. These are forty nine pounds. Okay. So not too cheap. But if you're going to be doing some racing and if you suffer from cold hands in the wet especially, they might be the absolute dream. And last, but by no means least, and more expensive than all the other things put together, is this. This is the Merida Mission CX Force Axis. Well, why did they call it that? Because it's a Merida Mission CX in, with Force Axis on it. Oh, is it? Yeah, it is. So this is the top of their um, race cyclocross bike range. So this is a... CX race bike effectively, um, but it's quite a, quite a versatile one. It's got um, hidden mudguard mounts here, and there's one under there, and you can put a mudguard on the back. So if you actually wanted to, um, it's got a removable bridge there as well for a mudguard. So if you did want to fit mudguards to it and commute yeah. to work on your 4,200 pound cyclocross race bike, you could do that. Fun at the weekends, business on the weekdays. Yeah, something like that. Business Ish. in the week, party at the weekend. That's the one. That's the badger. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's got a Merida CF3 carbon frame. Now their frames go from, allegedly go from CF2 all the way up to CF5. 
but I couldn't find any CF5 <laughs> bikes. Not no. even the team edition ones are CF5, yeah. so I don't know where, where they where they put them. But um, so it's a it's good quality carbon frame, carbon fork. We've got three axles front and back, obviously. We've got a full SRAM Force Axis yeah. uh, group set. Wireless, one by, so a 38 tooth chain ring and a 10 to 33 at the back. So race gears probably rather than... Um, decent range though. Decent still. range of race gears. Yeah. yeah, probably not for your like really steep gravel climbs no. in the middle of nowhere. No. Uh, 160 rotors, aren't they? Front and back, which yeah. I've not really seen much before. You usually see, if you see a 160 at the front, you sometimes see a 140 at the back, but yeah, that's, that'll be good for larger riders, say. Well, that's good, because I'm going to be riding it, and I'm one of them. I wasn't saying anything. <laughs> You're calling me fat. No. Unbelievable. <laughs> so this is ready to race, straight out of the box. I yep. mean, straight out of the box and onto the scales, this bike in a large, 7.95 kilos. That's good. Which is less than my race yep. bike weighs. <laughs> my, my road race bike. Um, which is also a Merida, actually. Oh. Although not as expensive as this. Uh, so it's got carbon bars, it's got a carbon seat post. Yeah. Quite a lightweight saddle, uh, Merida zone. Um, and yeah, it's top spec. Now, I've already reviewed one of these and I really, really liked it. Okay. So. I'm hoping you'll like it too, I'm with the like new it. electronic fancy yeah. group set as well. Yeah. Because the old mechanical stuff did work very, very well for cyclocross. But yeah, it's a very, very good looking bike, very clean looking bike without the, uh, with the wires for the group set. It's very shiny as well. It's beautiful. So I'm looking forward to having a go on this. But it's £4,200. I'll try not to break uh, it. Don't be scratching that. Well, no. So that is uh, all the shiny stuff for this week. If you've got oh, any questions right. about um, any of these things, ask them in the comments below. Uh, we'll get them answered for you. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this on Road CC. Cheers. Hello and welcome to Road CC. This is shiny stuff where we take a look through some of the things that have caught our eye the magpies we are as it's come in for testing or not to be tested if it's just lying around the office. What are you talking about? <laughs> the video and what is in it.